Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 30. In this tutorial we're going to carry on with our pause menu and we're going to make it look prettier and we're going to add stuff to it to make it interactable. And don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series. And if you feel like supporting a good cause if you've enjoyed the series so far, please feel free to check out my Patreon where you learn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So first thing I want to do is take the inventory menu because after the end of the last tutorial, I felt I think I want it to actually stretch across the entire screen. So I'm gonna turn it back on for now and zero everything out. So I wanna make it look a little bit better as well. So I'm gonna to go to my textures folder and I'm gonna bring in a texture to apply to it. So I'm going to drag and drop this, and you can get it on the website for free. Head over there, download an assets, RPG series, and tutorial number 30. So let's take it, and let's change it to a sprite, and then click apply. So we have to change it to a sprite because we're applying it to the panel directly. We're not applying it as an image. And it goes just here, source image, and this right here is a sprite. Simple. So it's up to you how you want this to look at this point. So remember, it's your game, not mine. I just show you how to do it. So I'm going to have my alpha set a lot higher than what it is. So probably two, two five maybe. So it's just slightly see-through. I think that's the style I want to go for. You could obviously have yours much lower, or you could have it completely full. Again, it's entirely up to you. So the idea and layout of what we're aiming for in this tutorial is to have some buttons down the side which say um, items, quests, stats, and then the section which represents that button here. So let's start by adding in a button. Game object, UI, button. And I'm going to use the rec tool and bring it up to the top left about here. And then drag it inside the inventory menu. Now I'm going to change the text to say uh, items. And I think I'm going to have it much bigger. So font size, probably 40. Maybe change the font to... Let's try that one. And that obviously means that we have to increase the size of the button. Probably to about there. Now, I'm going to have the normal colour set as 0 alpha. And probably have the text set as white. And maybe I should bold it and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'll have it bold. And highlighted colour. I guess I might have this represent a certain colour. So I might have green for items. So let's have green. Uh, maybe about there. But also change the alpha to be quite low. So maybe 50. So when it's highlighted, maybe a little bit higher. Let's try 100 and maybe a darker green. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this out and just see how it looks right now on the screen. So let's bring it back up. Okay, so yep, I'll go for that. So let's change this now to say item button. And then we can duplicate. Hold control, press D, bring it down to about there. And this is going to be, what did I say, quest. So, quest button. And change this to say quests. And let's change the highlighted colour to a red kind of colour. Or should I have it blue? Let's have it blue. Let's have the stats as red. So, blue for quests. Hold control, press D. Change this to stat button. Uh, bring it down, probably about there, and change text to say stats, and change the colour, I say it was going to be like a, a red, so we'll go red. And now, let's see what they look like when they're highlighted. So let's press play, and bring it on, there we go. So we can see at least somewhat clearly what we're selecting here. So the next thing to do is create the panels which represent those buttons. So on inventory menu, right click, and let's go to UI, and let's have panel. 
So I'm going to bring the panel to a line about there. In fact, I might bring everything up just a little bit, a little bit higher, maybe about there. And like I said, this panel is representative of the items. So I'm going to probably bring to about there. Perfect. And I'm going to right click, rename item panel. Now, the next thing we do is duplicate it twice and don't move them. The reason we do that is because these panels overlay on top of each other, but only one panel will ever be selected at any one time. For example, if we click the item panel, only the item panel will appear, only the quest and only the stat. And we'll do that by modifying C Sharp script that we started last tutorial. So before we do that, let's change this to quest panel. And finally, stat panel. So I'm going to change the stat panel to have that uh, red kind of tint. Change the quest panel to have the blue kind of tint. And item panel is green, so green kind of tint. So by default, we'll have the item panel on since it's top of the list. So let's turn off quest and stat. Now, what do we do? Well, just for a bit more clarity, I'm going to have a little bit of text at the top of each panel as well, just saying like um, items, quests or whatever. So right click in there and we'll have UI, text, anchor it, top right. And we'll just say items. Let's have the same style font and white and maybe a little bit bigger font, maybe 20. I think I'll also align it to the right and just bring it to the top of that panel. Uh, hold control, press D, bring it into quest panel, just change it to say quests. And finally onto the stat panel, just to say stats. So a bit more clarity on where we are. So let's modify that script. So we need to go here to our global stat object and double click inventory menu right here and we'll open it up in Visual Studio. So we need to add in three extra variables and hopefully you guys know what those variables are going to be at this point. Yep, the three panels we just created. So public game object item panel public game object quest panel and finally public game object and it's stat panel got the p there next thing we need to create three new methods and obviously those three methods are for the three buttons that we've created so because they're buttons public void and we'll have this called show item open close bracket open curly bracket and that means that item panel dot set active true but at the same time we need to set the other two as inactive so they would be false quest panel dot set active false and then stat panel dot set active false semicolon now that is that method complete and we can actually copy that method and duplicate it underneath. So this one will be show quest. So obviously item panel would need to be false. Quest panel would need to be true. And stat panel would also need to be false. So we don't need to change that line there. The third one is going to be show stat. Obviously we change that to false. Quest panel still false. And stat panel is going to be the one that's true and save the script. So now as we've done that, we need to add in those variables over here. We know how to do that. So item panel into there, quest panel, stat panel. And now each of those buttons that we created, we need to click plus, we need to drag and drop, change the function, inventory menu, show item. We know how to do buttons, don't we guys? If you've forgotten for any reason at all, just go back a couple of tutorials where I explain a little bit more. 
So I'm just going to go through and add the functionality to each button. And last one, show stat. I'm going to save, turn off the inventory menu, and let's try this out. Oops, so there we go. Items by default is selected. Quests, there we go. There's our panel for quests. Stats, there's our quest. You know, this is how this works. It's as easy as that. People think this kind of thing is incredibly difficult, but it really isn't. Just those couple of lines of code have done that, given us the ability to change what we want right here. And obviously, as we build the items, our item inventory and whatnot, it'll all be done here. Quests we're going to add here, and stats we're going to add in probably next tutorial, you know, our gold, our XP. And I think next tutorial as well, we're going to add in down here, like a close button or something like that, or... Maybe at the top, some uh, some more information at the top. So the idea of what we've created here, it's not something that we're going to create like in one or two tutorials. It's something we need to build upon gradually as we go through the entire game. For example, up here we have gold zero. That can be moved to our inventory now. We don't need that to be on our screen all the time. So we're going to change that. And uh, like I say, it's something we'll add in throughout development we're not going to just do it all in one go we'll gradually add because that way when we've done something in game we can reflect it inside that inventory so like I say next tutorial we're going to add in what we already can to there so we're going to add in that gold our experience we're going to add in the quest names and whatever else and then you know we'll probably create uh, some more environment uh, look at creating some kind of cave, I think, like a dungeon, because that's where I want to go to next, uh, a dungeon. So, guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.